seven was a long, 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 long time ago. Michigan 34, Ohio State nothing makes it sound like it was in prehistoric times. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we love for you, the smart, hardcore college football fan each and every day with the best discussion, debate, and analysis. Lock it in right here. Like the videos, please. Comment, of course. Share the videos on social media. And of course, if you subscribe, then you hit the bell for the notifications and you know when we go live for our call-in shows and for our team-specific live streams. Ohio State and Michigan, uh, the Wolverines won the first 12 contests in the series with a couple ties. Uh, it was a great rivalry, but it went from being a regional rivalry to a college football spectacle and arguably the best rivalry in college football in the 1970s during the 10-year war of Bo versus Woody. Woody Hayes, uh, the mentor, and Bo, the disciple from Michigan, and pulled off the upset of mighty Ohio State in 1969, the number one team in the country and uh, defending national champion. That started the 10-year war. Bo um, edged Woody five wins to four with one tie and every game with a Rose Bowl and Big Ten championship on the line. But for the past 16 years, Ohio State has dominated, winning 15 of 16. The only time the Wolverines won was when Ohio State was in between great coaches in Jim Tressel and then Urban Meyer. They won the 2011 matchup when Ohio State lost seven total games that year under Luke Fickle. So it was the 10-year war during the 70s. Let's call it the 15-year bloodbath in Ohio State's favor. Let's break down the numbers and then give maybe a cause of why Ohio State has dominated and why it may not end anytime soon. Again, 15-1 and one since 2004. That was the last time Michigan won the Big Ten championship. So the Buckeyes, even in losing the Big Ten title in 04 to Michigan, who went on to the Rose Bowl to lose a classic game against Vince Young in Texas, 37-35, Ohio State still sent the Wolverines to Pasadena, hurting with a 37-21 loss in that year in 04, Michigan's last Big Ten championship. Ohio State, since the last time Michigan won a Big Ten championship, has won 11 Big Ten championships. Ohio State's worst record. Phenomenal stat here. Let this sink in. Other than the Luke Fickle interim coach here in 2011, in the other 15 years, Ohio State's worst, worst Big Ten record is 7-1. and one. Ohio State has won 171 games to 28 losses during that time frame. They have the best record in college football. They're 108-15 and 15 in the Big Ten. So let's compare Ohio State's overall dominance in the Big Ten and overall to Michigan's Decent play. Michigan during that time frame, 121 and 71 record, 73 and 50 in the Big Ten. So Ohio State is 35 games better than Michigan in the Big Ten. 108 and 15, great record, 73 and 50 for Michigan. Decent record, not even decent when you consider Michigan's standard, what's supposed to be the Michigan standard. Going 73 and 50, that's like going, break it down, 7 and 5. And 171 and 28 to 121 and 71, actually 120 wins for Michigan, means that the Buckeyes have won 51 more games than Michigan since the domination started. This is going back to 2005. Michigan's 3-9 and nine in bowl games. And Ohio State, again, has won um, 10 Big Ten championships. And that doesn't count the 2012 team that won all of its games and was on probation that really was the Big Ten champion, the best team in the Big Ten. They went 12-0, 8-0 in the conference. So the records have not been close. Michigan's been spotty, horrible under Rich Rod, and some of the time against uh, under Brady Hoke. Before that, Lloyd Carr had won a national title in 97. He was uh, finishing out his final three seasons in the span of time we're looking at. Oh, five, six, and 7, had good teams there, went to the Rose Bowl in 06. After a 1-2 loss, 1-2 uh, matchup and the loss to the Buckeyes in 06. And, of course, Tressel and Urban Meyer, phenomenal. And now Ryan Day taking the Buckeyes to a college football playoff. So the record's not even close. 
How about the recruiting? Well, the recruiting typically results in a record difference, and here it does as well. Although I think this is a combination story of recruiting and development of the players and coaching in the game. The game and game to game throughout the season. So it's a combination here because Ohio State has not been that much more talented, just overwhelmingly. We're not comparing Ohio State and Indiana here. Okay, so the Buckeyes average recruiting class during this time frame, going back to 2005, Ohio State's average recruiting class is 7.7, Michigan 14.2. So the average Ohio State class, 7th or 8th in the country. That might surprise some people because they've been better than that recently and certainly under Urban Meyer. But some of the Trestle classes were in the teens. Again, Ohio State, 7th or 8th in the country, average recruiting class Michigan at number 14 in the country. So it's a decided advantage, but it shouldn't have resulted in 15 and 1 and 51 games better on the field overall and 10 Big Ten championships to zero. In the Big Ten, Ohio State has consistently had the best recruiting class in the Big Ten. They have averaged a 1.2, meaning they're always number one, and a couple times they've been number two for Michigan a 2.3, so they've typically been number two to three in the Big Ten in recruiting, so right behind Ohio State, but substantially, uh, decidedly not as good. That's the 247 composite. Now, if we look at the five stars and the four stars, similar story here. It's decided, but it's not a blowout. It's not monumental. Ohio State has signed 29 five stars between 2005 and 2020. 29 five stars for the Buckeyes. Nine for Michigan, 194 four stars for Ohio State, 168 for Michigan. So a total of blue chip recruits for Ohio State at 223, Michigan at 177. So that's 46 more blue chippers, but that's over 15 years. So that's three per season, three more for the Buckeyes per season on average, blue chip recruits signed than Michigan. Now to the NFL draft. So that's the recruiting rankings. We see more talent going to Ohio State. We see it performing on the field much better, even beyond the recruiting rankings. So that speaks to, again, game coaching and also player development by those coaching staffs at Ohio State. And then how does it look three to four years later when those players are eligible for the NFL draft? This is more decided. Ohio State has had 102 draftees in the NFL draft since 2005. 102, Michigan 68. We saw this past NFL draft last month in which Michigan tied Ohio State behind LSU with 10 drafted players, but there's a difference between having players drafted in the first round and the sixth round. So those are the total numbers at 102 to 68, but Ohio State has had 28 players drafted in the first round. Michigan, only 11. Ohio State's even had more players drafted in the second and third rounds, the first half of the draft. 28 in the first round, 15 in the second, 19 in the third round for the Buckeyes for a total of 62 in the first three rounds compared to Michigan at 11, 9 in the second round, 12 in the third round. So 62-32 advantage of high draft picks for Ohio State, 102-68 overall. Better coaching, better recruiting, and Ohio State does have the advantage of having more players and better players in Ohio. Ohio has traditionally been a great recruiting state, not as great as it was in the 70s and 80s with people moving west and moving south, but Ohio State behind the deep south, Florida, Texas, and California is right there on that next rung of top six to seven states in the nation. Michigan is not there. Although the players in high school have not been, um, there's not been the disparity over the past few years, but Ohio's decidedly a better high school football playing state than Michigan. So Ohio State's got the advantage in state, but they certainly expand it as they go to Texas and Florida in particular. So better coaching, better recruiting, and then number three, there's just a flat-out obsession with winning at Ohio State versus what Michigan delivers. You would not think that a school and a football program that has beaten its rival and beaten their brains out 15 out of 16 years would still be obsessed 
with the game. But if you take a look at the Ohio State football facility, Michigan is everywhere. The game, the rival, it's everywhere. And the M is always crossed out. And they have a running clock to when the next game is. So they're not even counting down like many Ohio State fans. They're not counting the days since the last Michigan win over Ohio State because that would be thinking backwards. They are planning and preparing and thinking forward to the next Michigan game despite beating Michigan 15 of 16 years. That's still Ohio State's obsession. And Michigan probably has to get in that same mindset to have a chance to get back in this rivalry. Would love to get your thoughts on the game. And again, your requests on subjects that you would like to see me tackle on college football right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.